Hello folks, welcome, 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 welcome back to the Bailey workshop for the guitar making channel. For the last part, part four of making a body. So today I'm going to attempt <laughs> live on the internet. I did promise that I would show you how to do these recessed neck anchor washers. So we're going to do that. If there's time, we'll drill the bridge holes because I've had some questions about that one specific question and fitting the pots into a carved top and there's also some holes to drill so um, I'm going to start with the easy stuff I think today get a few jobs done um, and uh, obviously I'm not going to put the bridge on until we've got the neck on so we're going to do it in stages and I'm going to do some easy quick jobs first to get them out of the way um, if you've got any questions today Carol's over there as usual on the master computer taking your questions so um, yeah in the chat if you ask a question then Carol's going to shout them out to me um, but we might not get your questions instantly um, I've got a lot of jobs to do today so um, I'll be doing questions in between the jobs kind of thing so Carol will be shouting them out hopefully trying to keep them relevant to whatever job I'm doing at the time um, but we'll do our best to uh, keep you entertained for the next hour or so um, so we're here every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, click the like button and the bell icon and all the YouTube -y stuff for us. We're trying to grow the channel and um, every little helps. So we appreciate that. Um, I'll just briefly tell you what it's all about and then crack on. So what it is all about is um, for the last five years, I've been building um, an online guitar making academy. So we have filmed my Build Your Own courses, which I've been running for over 20 years, by the way, face to face. We filmed those and we broke them down into, it's about 50 or 60 fairly simple jobs that are about 10 or 20 minutes long to build a basic guitar, something like this. So we filmed the whole process and um, we laid it all out step by step in an online course format. So it starts with design your own guitar and then build your own guitar. I recommend you start with something fairly basic, but you don't have to, you can do whatever you want. Once you've got the basic methods down that I show you, you can pretty much build anything you like, including something like this, including a set neck or a bolt on guitar. Um, so there's also a course on bolt on guitar. Um, so head over to the online guitar making academy at guitarmaking.co.uk if you're interested in any of that. So without further ado then, unless there's any, I just want to say um, hello to everybody and thanks for joining in by the way. Have we got any comments before we crack on Carol? Well, just think, oh, I think you should just say a big hello to Edwin Den Hertog, Ertz, oh God, I always get his name on. Hi Ed. Edwin Den Hertog is watching in uh, uh, Holland and remember he, he said he came here and built a guitar yep, in I remember 2006. Ed. And 2008, and he was on the same course as TV 101. Oh, there you go. Reunited in the chat. So, as you know, I always keep my bench clean and free from chips. I've had a busy morning already because um, I did the last bit of carving. So, on the last live stream, I actually carved this top for you guys. Um, you actually saw me carving this top. This morning, I did, I did finish the carving. I did a, a belly carve. And um, I also did a, a heel carve here. Um, this is uh, to increase the, the access, minimise the feel of the thickness of the neck there. It makes for better neck access. But I am actually going to reshape that in a bit because instead of using a big square plate, I'm going to be using neck anchor washers. And it's a bit more tricky, a little bit more work. Again, I don't recommend it for a complete beginner because it is a little bit more tricky. What I'm trying to do is guide you towards the easiest possible way to build a guitar, to make your journey as pain-free as possible, and so you don't end up hating yourself. Mark, can I just interrupt? Go it's on a then. good point here because, um, well, first of all, just to say that uh, 
Louis Kechovi, he checked in um, to say that he couldn't come because he's busy at school, which I really loved. Hello, Louis. I um, hope you had a good day. Hi, Louis, Adams, when you're watching it back later. <laughs> Stephen Adams is watching, and he said he's he's watching you live now, and he's watching you doing a course, yes. he's doing a job. Of, so you've got, he's got you Open up three tabs. Visual st <laughs> stereo. He's got you on the course. Right? Um, That's what I like to but see. But I, I mentioned Stephen because he wanted to give a shout-out to Boot and Robin, who've really been helpful to him on the forum, which is what it's all about. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Carol. I'm going to mark the centre of this horn here. I'm marking the strap studs. And this way what I do is it, it goes down the centre of the horn. Something like that. But it's pointing, it's pointing slightly down rather than straight because you don't want your strap to start slipping off. If you put it on um, straight like... If you put it on straight like that, then the strap can fall off. So I'm going to angle it slightly like this. I was actually taught to point the pencil here at where the nut would be, over here somewhere. So slightly angled, that is where my strap stud's going to be. So this one's fairly easy. We've got a centre line because it's a um, two-piece body, this one. So I just need to mark the centre line on there. Where's it gone? So I just use a nice big round number like a hundred. <clears throat> Rather than do any maths, you can easily center that and then mark it. So that's my strap studs and the jack socket. If I um, put the guitar down, imagine, um, imagine I'm playing this guitar then um, this is kind of where my hand naturally rests. So I'm just going to put my finger there and that's where I'm going to mark my jack socket. You just want to make sure when you're putting it in that it's not going to hit any controls. I might just move it around a little bit to make sure it doesn't hit any of those controls. You don't want to put it too far around this way because then you won't be able to lean your guitar up without unplugging it. You don't want it around this way too far either. So somewhere about there Obviously, it's up to you where you put it. But just make sure it's not going to... When you put the jack in, that it's not going to hit any of these other controls. So there we go. Whenever we're doing any holes, we always punch first. And then drill. So, punch. 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 And then I like to just sit it flat on the bench like this for drilling. Let's do the jack socket first. I'll do the jack socket upside down. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. So instead of drilling 90 degrees to the surface as you'd expect, I'm going to angle the drill slightly. What it does is it creates a bit of relief on one side and it helps the um, when you push your jack in, there's a little, um, little piece of metal inside that has to move. <laughs> Angling the drill just creates a little bit of space on one side so that your jack socket doesn't jam when you plug it in. Jack socket. Strap studs. Pick up link holes. So I our pickups obviously need holes for the wires. What I like to do is drill from here all the way through to avoid this bit breaking. 
It's a good idea to just hold a piece of wood on the top of it like this. And then we can just drill straight through. I always drill over to one side. So the wires usually come out of one side. And then we drill through into the cavity. Done. That's all the easy stuff done. So I think what I'll do next is I'm going to reshape this bit for you, I promised you. I'm going to reshape this bit and then we're going to drill and mount the neck. So I'm heading over to the bandsaw just to do that, my dear. We need some camera work. Got this camera as well. Well. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So can can you see the shape? I'm gonna cut out. Press enter. Got it? I'm gonna just cut this off then folks. Sorry, I got it already. That was my fault. Washers. They don't want to be too close to the edge because they're going to be recessed. So I'm going to bring them in. Um, actually about the thickness of the washer is good, a good distance to bring it in from the edge. So just make sure that it is that distance from all edges. Mark the center. You could take a little bit more time than me to lay these out. I'm going to do it in a hurry. But I'm just using the other washers there as spacers. And then mark in the centre. And you like the camera full? Yeah. Can you see the, how I'm using the washers as a spacer? And then mark in this one in the middle. So it wants to be about, it's about four mil from the edge. Four mil, four mil, mark the centre. Let's just pop them on and have a look, see what that looks like. So you don't want your holes to be too close to the edge. Beautiful, that looks good to me. So I'm now gonna poke the centre of these. So 
So the question I was asked, I'm really sorry, I can't remember who asked the question, but somebody was asking me about, because there's a neck angle, if you remember last week we put an angle on this heel, because of the angle, um, do we need to angle the holes? The answer is no, because the angle is so negligible that it doesn't, um, it doesn't have any effect. So I'm going to actually use my pedestal drill to drill these five mil holes all the way through. Um, you could, I could just drill it in situ here on the bench with a five mil drill, but for things like neck mount holes and um, bridge holes and that, it's, if you've got one, it's much more preferable to use uh, a pedestal drill, something like this. So I'm going to head over there, Carol, if you can um, do that. Yeah, I'm going to drill these holes first and then there's two stages to this. We're going to drill the holes for the screws and then the holes for the washers, okay? So just bear with me while we do that. Do some pictures of the guitar while I set this up. Okay, so drilling the screw holes. I don't have that camera. It's over there, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, if you go one over here, then you can switch between the two. I think I need to adjust my thing because it doesn't go all the way through. Yeah, make sure you, you tie your hair back and all that kind of stuff when you're using your drill. I'm going to put a bit of wood underneath to drill into. That should do it. What I'll do is I'll put, put my goggles on and that will help tie my hair back. Let's do it. Okay, so now I'm going to change the drill. Can you? That's all right. Change the drill. I need a drill that's roughly the same size for these. I'm using a 16 mil flat bit here. Now, the depth on this is actually done by eye. This is where we have to use our guitar maker's eye. because the heel is carved all of these holes are at slightly different depths so we can't set a depth for this well we could but we'd have to set it individually four times so in the end I find it's just easier and quicker to do it by eye thusly okay so I usually have a, a washer nearby so I can check and let's have a go at one i'm going to try and drill to the exact same depth as the um washer Oh, 
always a good idea to tighten the drill before you start. Who spotted that I didn't tighten the truck? <laughs> So now I can pop the washers in and, uh, and test. Obviously, um, if I go over to the bench. Switch the cam please, Carol. Thank you. I've got a pretty good eye because I've done it so many times, but you can see they're all fairly even. I want to try and get it sort of about flush with the top because of the angle they're all slightly different depths of the hole but that looks pretty good to me maybe this one could go a little bit more if you do need to go a bit deeper obviously you can't make them any shallower so be careful but um, maybe this one could go just a bit deeper can you see that yeah so what we do is we put the drill into the hole with it switched off and we switch it on in the hole. Let me demonstrate. So I just need to go half a mil deeper there, Carol. And that was this hole. You got it? So I bring the drill down into the hole and then we're, I'm gonna switch it on in the hole there. Drill just a tiny bit more. There we go, Carol. Beautiful. Thank you, my dear. So now what we can do is mount the neck. Um, for now, for a minute, yeah. I'm going back over there in a minute. So we're going to mount the neck now. There's a few little um, burr marks I'll just take off with a little sanding file. <sighs> so what I'm going to do is pop my neck in and then I actually have over here I have a drill which is just mounted into a into a handle like this and it's easy to mark the holes through from the back it's a brad point so the point has a oh, oh, camera on. three's gone off it's a brad point so it's going to mark through the hole and and mark the center of the hole you can see the little pointy bit will mark the center of the hole so I'm marking the holes onto the neck but what I should do is just check that the neck is sitting exactly where I want it to be. So if I make a mark, oops, I'm going to rest the ruler down. Um, I'm resting the ruler down the side of the neck and making a little mark like this. Do that on both sides and then I can check if my neck is, there's my centre line. I can measure to make sure it's sitting in the centre. It's about a millimetre off. So what I can do at this point is just notch it over a tiny bit. Double check it. Check again. So it moved over about a millimetre. Check that. That looks 
like I did it the wrong way. Um, let's try that. Yeah, I moved it the wrong way. I'm just going to center it basically. Use a sharper pencil. So I can see where we are. So I'm centering the neck. And then I can mark through. It's better. You could put a clamp on there if necessary, but I think I can hold it without it moving. And just mark through those holes there. Same size drill. While I'm at it, okay, so there's my four marks. Just put that back in. While I'm at it, I'm going to draw on where the heel fits here. Because we can, we can recarve our heel now. I might want to leave a little bit. Let's leave maybe 10 mil, but we can recarve this heel now. We'll take that lump off. As I was saying, with this kind of neck joint, you can, you can carve more of the heel away on the neck as well. As somebody else mentioned that. So, bolt on all access neck. So now I've got four holes to drill and a little bit of carving to do. Over to the drill, my dear. I'm going to mark these a little bit deeper with a... Yeah. Yeah, it comes through on the other line, doesn't it? Remember? Chuck up. Done the chuck up for a change. Well, obviously we don't want to drill through our neck. So what I'm going to do if I put my uh, put my neck on there is I'm going to bring it down until it's just shy of the fretboard there. So I'm, st I'm not drilling all the way through, I'm going to stop in just before my fretboard and then I can set a stop on this drill. If you've got a pedestal drill then you'll know um, they all come with a lock. Mine's around here where you can't see it but I can set a stop so it won't go through. I'm stopping just before I hit the fretboard, okay? And um, the only thing to watch here is that when you press down, the, the neck wants to tilt like this. So I'm just going to try and hold it flat as we go. just happened to have all my carving tools just here so well, can you tell them that perspective makes it look like that drill is right by your finger when it went does it? Yeah, it does yeah we need to maybe fix that camera angle so it doesn't look as fierce but um, trust me I'm not going to drill my own fingers keep your fingers well clear can we have camera two please Carol Mm -hmm. 
So I can carve this heel now. You might need to do a bit of camera work, Carol. Obviously, I don't want to make it any thinner than it already is because I've already made a nice shape. And I don't want to go over this line because that's where it joins the body. If I go over this line, I'll end up with a big horrible gap. But I can take a fair whack of this off. If you want to know how to carve a neck, by the way, I did a live stream on that. But if you really want to know all the ins and outs, then the best thing to do is to join up as a premium member. Those of you that have carved a neck before will remember that we always start with facets. So when I'm reshaping, I'm doing the same kind of thing. Remember when this was facets? So I'm just going to carve a facet on each side. And then a facet on the top, take it down to depth. These rasps are available for sale on our shop, by the way. Head over to guitarmaking.co.uk. <sighs> Makes it so easy to carve. So I start off with three facets. I'm trying to match those original facets that we made back when I carved the neck. Start off with three nice even facets like that. Now I'm just going to carve extra facets. Basically I'm knocking the corners off. Rolling it round to blend it in. And that'll about do. I do have a half inch round rasp, which I like. These are also available. Um, it's great for just doing the ends. just for finishing off. Brilliant. I'll just give that a tickle with a sander. This is 80 grit, by the way. Put your mask on. Oh, where's my mask? Do you know where it is then, Carol? You were quick to shout it out. Less quick to find it. Any ideas? Tell you what, this will do. Use that blue one. Got it. Point it down a bit, Carol. Bit more, bit more, bit more. Thank you.
bit of reshaping. Nobody would ever know. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's pop it in the body and I'll show you what that looks like. We've still got a couple jobs left to do. Carol's got a rake of questions. So let's do some questions while I'm doing this then. Yeah? Yep. Go on. Okay. Right, I'm going to say one thing before we um, do questions. Right. When you are carving the heel like this, see I've put an angle on it. Um, so the front screws are going to be shorter than the back screws, you see. So um, I've done this before, obviously. So I was expecting that. So what I did this morning was I got myself a couple of screws. Ignore the colour. The colour doesn't matter. But normal length screws. And then what I've done is I've ground off um, about four threads of the... Um, I've ground two of these down so that... Um, well, I guess we should just pop them in. You need to pop your screws through the hole long one and a short one at the front. You need to put your screws through the hole to make sure that your screws aren't going to come out through your fretboard, if you see what I mean. So I've had to grind the front screws down. Hopefully that makes sense. You've got long screws and short screws. Uh, so I'm going to actually mount the neck now. Um, a little bit of wax on the screw helps the screw go in. So let's just, I don't need to put all the screws in. I'm just going to put um, uh, two screws. So a short one and a long one on the diagonals like that. Screwdriver. Looking for a screwdriver. What are you laughing at? Look how many tools that I need. Um, you could, instead of laughing, you could actually look for one for me. This will do. I'm reduced to using a chubby. What is it? What has happened? It's the only one I can find, folks. Yep, I've got power screwdrivers, big ones, small ones, all kinds of screwdrivers. So where are they then? Well, wow. I know where I'd like to put them. There's only you and Lewis that are oh. in here. So, of the screwdriver stealing hours been in again? Yeah. So, I just wanted to point that out, that um, you need to grind your screws down if you're putting an angle on your neck. Mm -hmm. There we go, solid. So having done that, now I can mount my um, bridge as I normally mount my bridge. Um, but I think what I'm going to do next is I did carve this top and I promised that I would show you how to fit the pots. Um, it's a bit more tricky to fit these um, controls because of the arch of the top. So I'm going to show you that next and then we'll see where we are for time. Can we ask, answer the questions I've got? Yep, answer questions. Just... questions, questions, questions. Right, let's do we move on, right, so, um, right. right, here we go, microphone on. Right, so ages ago, Superclunk um, asked do you put a flat spot for the button on the horn? No. Personally, I don't. Some people do. I don't find it's necessary. Um, obviously, that does depend on the guitar, though. Some, some do have uh, really, really pointy horns. And in that case, I might do it. If it's really, really super pointy, then I might do it. 
Right, what I'm doing here then folks is I'm clamping up this little circle over the top of um, here and I'm going to use it as a pattern to make a little dish. While Carrie's asking questions I'm going to set, be setting that up. I'm using this, this is a round bottom cutter with a bearing on it and it's going to copy the round shape because it's round bottom it leaves a nice little dish shape. So uh, I'm just going to put that in my router. While Carol was asking questions. But they're saying that, um, can you hear me now? They're saying that uh, they can't hear me. Have you turned my mic off, is what they're saying? No, your mic's on. Right, okay. All right, so, Speak um, up. right, uh, Edwin, Edwin Den Hertog said, have you used barrel jacks? How do you feel about barrel jacks? Tell me about barrel jacks. Okay, barrel jacks are great, but they're a bit more difficult to fit. Um, the problem with a barrel jack is that you need to put a nut on the back of it so that so you need somewhere that's flat on the inside that your nut will stick on. Not recommended for a beginner. Okay. Uh, Russ said, uh, did you film carving behind the neck pocket? No. That's no, anybody. Okay. No, I did that this morning. Um, I didn't film that, I'm afraid, but it's just done exactly the same way as we do all our carving. Um, we mark out the two lines and then we join up the two lines with a facet. Okay, Matt so Homan. What, what I've done here is set that up so it's right in the middle of the hole. You can see that, hopefully. Just about. I might just move that camera a bit to get a better view. It'll take me 10 seconds. There we go. So I'm going to set this to go about two and a half mil deep. Take it down to touch the wood. Um, take the stop down. Oh, camera three's off. Okay. Take it down to touch the wood. I've got a stop here. So I'm going to set, obviously your router might be different. Take it down to a stop and I'm going to dial in two and a half mil. Now I'm just going to make a little circle. Make sure your router's plugged in. There's our dish. Repeat that three times. You'll notice depending on where it is on the curve, you might not get a full circle. It might not look like a circle. It might look like a three quarter moon shape or something like that. That's fine, that's normal. Take it down to touch the wood. Have to reset the depth every time because each one's slightly different. Two and a half mil. <laughs> Wait till it stops spinning. Last one. So this one's more on the edge of the curve. So it's, it's probably not going to come out as a full circle. You'll see what I mean. Set it to zero, two and a half mil. Job done. So that's how we fit them from the front. Now we need to fit them from the back. I'm going to change the cutter for a long cutter. And now I'm not going to do all three, I'm just going to do one for you. You need to find the actual control that you're using. Look at that. Beautiful. So now we need to fit them from the back. If you remember last time we just went to a nominal depth on this cavity 
Um, what I like to do is leave, um, I go all the way down, but leave 16 mil. So there's 16 mil of wood left in there, apart from what I just took off. So that's way too much to get a pot in. Um, when I say pot, I mean potentiometer, which is a volume control or a tone control. I've got one out ready. So we've got a switch and lost it. Get another one. So yeah, we've got our switch and our volume control. I'm just going to do the volume for now, but the, the switch is exactly the same. Bear in mind, by the way, these come with a little, um, there's a little nib on there. See this nib? I need to break that off to fit it. So we'll just get some pliers or some snips and snip that off. Now we can test the fit in the body. And as you can see, there's, there's no threads sticking out the top. Um, we actually need three, three to four threads sticking out. Three to four threads so that we can put the nut and the washer on. Obviously these are fitted from, with a nut and washer from the front. So that's about three mil. It needs to stick out about three to four mil, okay? So if, if there's no thread sticking out, I know I can go at least three mil. I wouldn't go any more than three mil at a time. And the other thing to note is that we don't need to do the whole surface. We can just do um, just a bit that's just big enough for the actual pot. It can be difficult to see while you're actually working. Best way to, to, to do it is to have the one that you're working on as far away from you as possible. So I'm standing over here and the hole is as far away from me as it can be. Then when I put the router on, I can actually look underneath. I can see underneath the router. Um, maybe if I turn it round, we might even be able to get in there with a the camera. Camera, oh, camera three is not working, is it? No. I'm going to fix camera three. Bear with me 10 seconds, I'll try differently. We'll do a question while I'm sorting this out. Okay, so, um, um, Ricky Farrier, right, Ricky Farrier asked, um, the washer holes, do, do you drill them before or after the back carve? Um, well, I'd already carved it this morning, so I can't, you have to do them after it's carved. You drill the holes after you carve? Yeah, okay. I'd already carved it this morning. Um, and Deej said, how do you stop breakout because, as the back is, is carved? How do you stop breakout when you're... Um, break out on these big holes. Let me talk about that in a minute. I'm going to do this about three mil. You can see under there, can you? Camera three. three. Just about. Yeah. So I've set um, zero. I've set about a gap of about three mil. And I'm just going to do, you can see the area that I've marked with a pencil. difficult bit is waiting for it to stop spinning. Now we test that. Test it in the hole. We're looking for about three threads, three or four threads sticking through. I still haven't got any threads sticking through. So I'm going to go another three mil. 
as I get closer, I'm just going to take smaller and smaller cuts until it fits perfectly. And I'll just repeat that for each one. Another three mil. Now, hopefully the more astute of you will have noticed how much room there is here for catastrophe. Um, I think that's just about level with the front now. So probably another three mil will be perfect. But if I was to route slightly too deep because of the curve of this top, then there's a potential for the router to cutter to start coming out here somewhere. So you have to be careful, which is why, again, another reason why I don't recommend this for a beginner. It's not just the carving of the top that you've got to consider, but also the fitting of the controls afterwards. It's a lot more difficult. I was playing it safe there, so I think probably I'm probably two mil. Yep. The other camera was better for that, Carol. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go just one more mil, and then we're done. We'll give you a close up of that afterwards. Sweet and vetch off. One more mil. Can I just ask you a question now? Yeah. Because right. it's relevant now. Um, uh, as as Zagami is asking, why don't you use longer shaft pots? Sorry, as as Ad's asking, why don't you Good use question. longer shaft pots? It is a good question. Why don't we use longer shaft pots? Um, well, you would still have to fit them individually because they would all be at slightly different depths. Um, so we could use longer shaft pots. It would probably mean we'd have to do less machining. Um, but then there are some guitars that we make where um, they can get quite thin and the longer shaft pot wouldn't fit. So I tend to use sort of standard length pots, but you are right. Um, you could use standard length pots. You could use longer length pots and that would make it a little bit easier, but it's only going to make it easier on the pots. Your switches, you're still going to be in the same boat with your switches um, and all, all the others. So um, what you end up with is about three to four mil. Um, is it? No, you end up with quarter an inch, of course, of wood left in the middle. So you end up with plenty left. That's, uh, that's, that's six mil of wood in there. So it's quite solid. Not a problem. Longer shafts might save a little bit of time in some cases, but there's some like thinner body guitars where you wouldn't get them in. So that's why we don't use them. Okay. Yeah, Cameron 3's back then. Brilliant. Rock and roll. So we basically would repeat that. They can't see you because we've got no camera on you. We would basically repeat that. Um, we'll put the camera on me then. You're the boss, Carol. So can you zoom out a bit? Because that's a bit much. I hope you all heard that and you've Lordy written that Lord. down. I am the boss, apparently. She always gives me way too much head room. There we go. Right. Um, what else was I going to do? Mount the bridge. Right, so that's Answer. basically just repetitive. Repeat that until uh, they all fit. And then uh, I did promise, um, a guy asked me a question about the bridge, which I want to answer. Um, so uh, do you want to do some questions first, Carol? Well, are you 
you going to... You... Go on then. Yes, if you're going to answer them. Right. I'll try. Right, okay. So, uh... Okay. So, uh, Clinton, way back at the beginning of the session, suggested that you um, tackled maybe a base build with an active pickup, and then um, somebody else, I think it was James Perry, he, he also liked the idea of you doing a, a session with active pickups. How does that feel for you? I've got a base bridge with an active pickups built in. That is absolutely amazing. It's the ghost system. Um, I've got a base bridge with, um, it's got four individual pickups, one for each string. And then we, we had two actually, and one of them was built into a base. Oh, it sounded like, almost like a double base, like really woody, it was amazing. Well, and uh, if we were voting, the votes for Carol being the boss are quite high at the moment, Mark. They're running quite high. Just, just Everyone say. knows you're the boss, Carol. Uh -huh. OK, so... Um, don't, don't rub it in. Uh, Matt Beals <laughs> asked, um, is it Danish oil on the left-handed bandsman? And I thought... Um, um, it's actually a satin finish, this one. Oh, no. That's the right-handed one. The right-handed one. Is it the left-handed one in the middle? This one. These are, yeah, this is left-handed, this one. That's so, no, this is a matte finish. Um, who was asking? Matt Beals, funny enough. Matt? It's a matte finish. Um, I personally don't recommend using any colour with an oiled finish because um, it's not hardware enough. The colour just comes off too fast. I don't recommend it. If you're using any kind of colour, in this case, we mixed our own custom plum colour. Um, custom purple colour that we call plum. Um, we put the stain on the wood and then we sprayed over with a matte finish. I'll be covering all that kind of stuff on the course. And, and what, and the, is that the finishing course, Mark? The finishing course, <laughs> yeah. I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, okay, thank you. So Robin, ages ago, asked, can you make any suggestions how to drill a vertical hole with a handheld drill? Yes, you can use a drill guide. Which is what Clinton suggested. And he said a drill block guide, which you can also use for ferrules, for example, which that is what we've got. Also, there's another, there are, um, there's one brand of drill, I, I can't remember, I think it was a Bosch drill that I saw, that actually had a spirit level on the back of the drill. So, maybe that's something you could consider. You could buy a small spirit level, put it on the back of your drill. Um, I've seen one built in, and then as long as your bench is flat, then then you can hold your drill um, square, spirit level on your drill. Seen it done. Or, or a drill guide, but you do need, you need a pedestal drill to make one of these in the first place. So um, that, that will hold your drill square as you drill. Okay, thank you. So the next um, Rock and Roller 912. I'm just going to make one more suggestion for holding your drill square. You can, um, if we go to camera two, it's usually easy to hold it square one way. I can see easily one way or the other, but I might not be able to see this way. But if you get a mate to stand here and he can t keep you straight in this direction whilst you're looking in this direction, then, um, Having a mate can help hold you straight. Because um, you can see one way and then he can see the other way, if you see what I mean. Unfortunately, I ain't got no mates, have I, Carol? <laughs> so I had to buy a pedestal drill. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, what am I, I doing? Can't, listen, I can't read the comments and uh, I'm going to read the comments in a minute. I think there's some more coming in. Right, that's that, that's that. Okay. Um, Okay, I started to ask this, but then I didn't. So Rock and Roller 912 said, um, can you drill the washer holes first and then the long holes? Hello? Um, you can do anything you like. <laughs> <laughs> but the way I do it works, doesn't it? Mm. Try it the other way and see how you get on. 
um, well, yeah, you, you could do it either way around, but I've found it better to do it that's that way around. Um, what I find is that the flat bit will centre on the drill, that, on the, the five mil drill. So that's the way around I prefer to do it. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Who's to say I've got it right? Well, Ed, Edwin suggested... I've only been doing it 20 years. Edwin suggested Forstner bits. He, he's, he uses... Yes, if you could afford them. Um, Forstner bits. But Forstner bits don't have such a long point. So um, they're not as easy to... It's not as easy to drill with the Forstner bit on an angle, believe it or not. Um, because the, the point in the centre isn't as long. So... Uh, it can wander. Forcing a bits can work. I actually bought a forcing a bit for this exact purpose. Um, but I'm still using the flat bit, so. Uh, here's a forcing a bit. Forcing a bits are better. They're actually. Um, more suited for drilling on the edge of a piece, you see. Um, if you're drilling on the edge of a, a, a board, you can drill like a, a partial hole on the edge of a board. Which is, there isn't any other kind of drill that's good at that. Forcing the bits are really good for that. Um, but in this case, I did buy one specifically for doing it, but here I am using the flat bit, the cheap flat bit. Um, this one's about five times the price of this one as well. So flat bit's a lot cheaper and it works. I find it more accurate to be honest because like I say the, the big long the big long thing in the centre locates on the holes better. Especially when you're drilling on an angle. The forcing a bit hasn't got such a long so it can start sliding down the angle. Um, Clinton Superclunk saying you need reference in the Brad point, small bit first, then big. Yes, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh, you're in the wrong camera. That's what I'm suggesting, yes. Drill with a small hole and that, that centres the big hole for you. Makes it a lot easier. But as I say, you can do it either way round. But I would test it on some scrap before you try drilling your expensive guitar. Right, you've got to let me go to some of these. So, so um, Robin, Robin says thanks for that. He said because he's he's left his pillow drill at home. Cause he's in the caravan at the moment, so he's he's Robin, no mates. Um, uh, James Perry. Join was, the club, Robin. James Perry. Uh, there's been several comments about the the thing on the far right um, next to the drill, um, and there's been offers of helping you out, getting rid of it, taking it off your hands, yes. all that kind of thing. Yeah. They've spotted it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Roland was in earlier on. I'm not sure if he's still here, but uh, yeah, it's looking. It's not quite finished yet, but it's looking great. And um, just so you know that we're using. Roland's been kind enough to let us use it as part of the finishing course as well. Um, so that's that's partly why it's got slow progress. I might give you a better view of that in a minute. Okay, um, Stephen Adams said that he's on his third Bailey neck. Um, he's been using yeah. your, obviously the, the course to, to carve and he's now carving his third, so that's good, isn't it? Fantastic. And a um, whole load of stuff about health and safety and hair, and there seems to be quite a few people in the community who don't need to worry about tying their hair back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I reckon I'll one, wake up one day and all my hair will just be there on the pillow next to me, and I'll, I'll be bold. Then I'll know I've really made it, won't I? Yeah. Well, they've 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 preempted all That's that, when so. I know I've made it. Okay. Um, uh, James Perry has suggested <laughs> that uh, we have a live stream of Mark's next appraisal with his boss. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Roland's still here and keeping quiet. He said, hello Roland. It's looking absolutely gorgeous. So you ignore all of them. Um, right, and uh, Mark, uh, Bag Press is, he's in the house. He's asked a question. Hi Bag Press. Um, he says, how many guitar makers does it take to drill a hole? Um, I don't know. How many guitar makers does it take oh, to drill a hole? It's one of them, isn't it? Um, and that is almost Depends it. how many mates he's got. Um, I'm just looking back to see if there's anything else there. 
Um, well, no, just to say that we've had an awful lot of people who are um, working today, watching us work. They're working and watching us work. So, um, <laughs> good. Quite, quite good. Um, right, is there anything else on this? Oh, yeah, just one thing that I want to say that um, did, did spot and comment on the fact that you actually earlier on said it was my fault. So that is now in writing in more than one place and, of course, etched on their minds. This will be the live stream where uh, that, that will be the story. It was my fault. So there we are. Thank you, everybody. Okay, right, I'm just marking this bridge out then. Um, you regulars will know how to mark the bridge out. The bridge that I'm using actually is going to be this wrap over style. And um, yeah, the, the question I had was, um, as you guys know, um, there's an intonation adjustment from the mathematical position of this scale, scale line. So what I've marked on here, is 25 and a half inches there, 25 and a half inches. That is my scale length line. But the string, if you measure a string, it will be slightly longer than that because of the intonation adjustment. So as you guys all know, when you bend a string, if you're a player, when you bend a string, the pitch goes up. So whenever you um, fret, any note you're actually bending the string just slightly and so to compensate for that the bridge is actually set back slightly on the treble side 1.5 mil or a sixteenth of an inch and on the bass side 4.5 mil or three sixteenths of an inch join them up gives you your intonation line so you have scale length line and then your wonky intonation line and so the genius of Trevor Wilkinson is that he's made this bridge so that if you just measure quarter inch past the scale length line and center the bridge there, then each takeoff point lines up with the intonation line and it brings it out pretty much perfectly. So um, a guy was asking, how come when you drew your wonky line, you then just put it a quarter inches back? Well, any other bridge, what you would have to do is try and line up the string takeoff points with your intonation line and then mark your bridge mount holes. So your bridge would come out with the saddles in line with the intonation line rather than the scale length line. Well, Trevor's a clever bloke, so to make it easy for us, he just constructed his bridge. He designed his bridge so that if you just measure back a quarter inch or six mil from your scale length line, I'll do, I'll do it in mil, six mil. Then he's designed his bridge I can square that across actually because it's um, going to be sitting square with the drafting square. This bridge sits square and it's, it's 82 mil from centre to centre. So if I just mark 41 mil either side, the genius of Trevor Wilkinson means that that will put your bridge in exactly the right place. So take my word for it, folks. It works. Scale length, add quarter of an inch, and then mark 41 mil either side. That gives you your um, bridge position, super accurate bridge position. Um, any other bridge, what you would have to do is just make sure wherever you mark it, that the saddles are in line as close as you can get with the intonation line. And pretty much all bridges, even this one, has got some intonation adjustment on it. So if you get it slightly wrong, you should still be able to intonate your guitar okay. You should still have plenty of adjustment. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. I'm sorry I can't remember who it was who asked, but um, we're working on that.
What I would do with these bridge holes then is drill, um, again, I would drill a pilot hole and then drill a big hole for the ferrules. So I, I think this is a 12 mil hole, but again, I would do a test hole first and um, make sure it's okay before I actually drill the guitar. So I might as well just go ahead and do that. No, can I, I need to ask these questions. Some yeah, you questions can ask questions come. while I'm doing the drill. Okay. Go on. Right, so um, Eddie Cameron asked, would you ever um, have a jack socket where, use a jack socket where the threaded part was flush with the body? Um, no. Would I have a jack socket where the threaded part was flush with the body? I think you mean a barrel jack. Let me see if I can just lay my hands on one. We did talk briefly about barrel jacks earlier. Um, I've got one. Here's a barrel jack. I think you might be talking about a barrel jack, one of these. So yes, we do sometimes use them, but I'll show you what I was getting at earlier. Um, for one thing, it's a smaller hole. Um, I believe it's a half inch hole, but the problem is that on this side, you need, um, it might be okay on this guitar look, because we've got a nice thin area there where we could put the barrel jack, but you, you need, um, you need to put a bolt on this side, you see, there's a nut that goes on. And so what you need in here is you need a flat area where you can mount your barrel jack and then screw the nut on. So it's not recommended for the beginner. We do it if people ask for it. But um, there's another reason that I don't do it very often and that is that I don't think they're as good quality as your standard open style jack and they're more expensive as well. So um, you your barrel jacks are more expensive, less reliable, and more difficult to fit. So, as you guys know, what I'm all about, I'm trying to make it easy for you guys. And uh, um, what guitar making, you can get yourself into a hole if you're not careful, just by choosing something that's a lot more difficult to fit than something else. So, I try and guide you towards um, simplicity, you know, and Elegance is simplicity, isn't it? Um, you might prefer the look of the barrel jacks, um, but I gave you three reasons why I don't think they're better. Um, but your opinion might vary. There are some guitars where we have to use a barrel jack if the edge is very thin and we want to mount the jack on the edge, then um, this is a great big 22 mil hole for a standard jack. If your side isn't wide enough, Sometimes we're forced to use the, the narrower barrel jack. So yeah, we do use them, but they're not my favorite. I think is the right answer. Okay, I've got one more question at the moment. Go uh, on then. So Cheese Whisk says, if you were to use a Tone Pro bridge, um, would you have the saddle straight to bridge or straight? Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. I think you might be talking about drilling these posts um, on an angle. Um, no, I would always drill them straight, vertical. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what you mean, but, uh, but I think that's what you mean. So the answer would be no, I would always drill them straight. Um, that's not to say you couldn't drill them at a slight angle maybe a four degree angle tilted back probably wouldn't do any harm but most of these bridges they're actually made to be mounted straight so uh, unless unless i'm mistaken i'm sure youtube will prove me right or wrong so carol i'm going to do drill So Mark, what, uh, what Deed says, he thinks that Eddie might have meant the, um, like a telly dished thing. A 
tally. Um, yeah, and Eddie, Eddie's just confirmed. You know the the I was, that's what I was looking for the, the tally stole. The the dish thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see if I can find one. Yes, we use those as well. Um, yeah. So. A tally style jack socket. Not the barrel, you're saying that's what Right, a tally style jack socket fits into the same hole. Hold on, where are you? What, what camera are you on? I've no oh, idea. Right. Okay. You tell me. Three, maybe? Okay. Yeah, um... Okay. Thanks, Carol. So I'm just going to drill... Pilot hole first. Look, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rubbish today. Cheese Whisk said he means the saddle behind the bridge. The saddle behind the bridge. Right, you mean a stop tailpiece? Ah, uh, right, you're talking about, yes, a, a, like a Les Paul kind of thing. Right. Yeah, again, they're just drilled straight as well. There's no difference. Enter. That's it. So I've drilled my pilot holes and now I've brought it back to my bench just to check it. Looks pretty good to me. Holes line up. Perfect. So now I can go ahead and drill for um, for the actual posts. But um, what I'll do first is just do a hole in a bit of scrap. So, Carol, if you could, um... So I think I've got the right drill here, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to do a test hole. What do we do? Check twice, cut once. Oh. Bit of scrap wood. <laughs> Test it. Perfect. Obviously I've done this before, so I had a pretty good idea. The only other thing we need to do now is to set the depth. So this is 20 mil long. There's nothing worse than drilling a hole that's just not quite deep enough. Is that focusing? Is that a little focused, Carol? So I'm going to set it about 21 or 22 mil. There's nothing worse than it being just slightly too shallow. So bring it down to touch the wood. And then I've got my depth stop here that I can adjust. You'll find yours. If you've got a pedestal drill, it will have a depth stop on it. And just make sure you drill slightly deeper than, um, than the post. Now we can drill our earth link hole. Perfect. So we need a hole from here into the cavity. So um, it's going to damage the wood at the top there, but I'm, th I'm not fussed because the bridge covers it up. But we need a hole here for our earth link wire. So I don't know if you guys remember 
back in the way distant past when I was marking out and designing this um, this body do you remember I made it deliberately extra wide here at the neck socket well now would be a good time to just trim that off so I was, I'd marked it with a pencil I've got to zoom out that's a little bit. Before. Yeah, it's much easier when there's someone else on the camera. See that little sticky out bit at the top there? We just need to trim that off now and we can we can just sand that down until it's perfectly flush with the neck or carve it or I'm gonna use my drum sander, but just mark it nice and clear with a pencil there. And then when we pop our neck out, it will be clear where we need to take it down to. So I've marked it on both sides, look. Um, let's have some wide shots then and show them what the guitar looks like before I take the neck off. So yeah, if you ever wanted to know what a double cut style carved top PRS style guitar would look like with a Telecaster neck. <laughs> And now you know. There it is. It's got a nice weight to it actually, it's not too heavy. Um, I'll do a few uh, shots of how I, I would fix this for you. But I think to all intents and purposes, we're pretty much there today. If you've got any last questions, now would be the time to get them in the comments. Okay, well, whilst there is actually, I think there's a, there's a, a I'll take there's the neck off. I think there's one brewing. Uh, there's, 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 there's muttering about the forum, so um, there might be a question brewing. I'm just waiting for, for it to come through. Um, what, well, they're um, all working on a question, are they together? <laughs> no, well, apparently, <laughs> Stephen Adams, Clint just said, this is a perfect time for Stephen Adams to ask the question that he put in the forum. And I said you'd have missed it if it was this morning because you'd be getting ready for this. So we'll see. It's been quite come through. Um, um, uh, Boo, Boo said, "Oh, does he get credit? Because he, he perfectly answered. He, he perfectly answered a question earlier on on the forum or yesterday in the forum, which you just explained. Four marks. Everybody gave him a round of applause. Well so done. There's quite a lot of chat about the forum. Um, so it, do you want to explain what that is for people who are new? For those who don't know, on guitarmaking.co.uk you will find um, all my um, premium courses. You need to be a premium member to get the design your own electric and acoustic and build your own electric and acoustic. Um, you need uh, to become a premium member, but you can also become just a supporter where you just get a warm fuzzy feeling and the knowledge that you're helping keep guitar making alive in the UK, literally. And um, you can also become a free member. So if you just want to lurk about, that's probably what I would do. <laughs> just lurk about and glean information. You can do that if you want. This, um, the, the being, we're all on there. Super helpfulness, isn't it? Everybody is so helpful. It's not like most forums. Um, we don't have no negativity on our forum. It's only positivity and we're all there encouraging everybody else everybody's encouraging each other and yeah it's i'm constantly amazed at what everybody's coming up with um basically i i was very lucky in my youth to get a job in a guitar factory and that's where i learned my trade and we learned how to do it on big machines and then what i had to do when we left was i had to work out how to do it all kind of like um you know just on your on your table so that's what I did. I took factory methods and converted them uh, to methods that anybody can do uh, just on a bench like this. You'll need a few tools. We've got, um, I've got a video on essential tools and a little booklet that you can get um, on the website. Um, essential tools for guitar making. Funnily enough, I noticed another <laughs> popular guitar channel did a, a video last week with a similar title. It's interesting. <laughs> so anyway, Mark. But yeah. It's the time's passing by. Time's passing by. I'm just going to tidy up this heel, 
and then we're done. So, Carol, for that, I'm going to go over to the, um, the drum sander over here. So if you, if you could... Yeah, why isn't it focusing though? Oh, there it goes. There we go. So let's stay on the bench for just for a minute. If you could just put them back on the bench. Camera two, just for a minute, Carol. Okay. Yeah, well, right, just put me on. So you could use a rasp, um, this kind of thing. Let me zoom out a bit on this one. No. Yeah. So if you hang it over the edge of the bench, you can use your rasp like this. Do it camera two as well, Carl. So yeah, you can see, it wouldn't take long just to do it that way. But I'm going to show you the, the other way. So I've got this drum sander, my dearest. As you can see, a little bit more of that, job's done. Okay, we'll do the last round of questions and then uh, I think my work here is done. Okay, um, so, well, uh, come on. Don't, just some thanks, Eddie Cameron says thanks for another informative session. Um, Super Clunk, oh hang on a minute, Super Clunk, yeah, so Super Clunk, I, I still never got to the bottom of what Steve was question because I expect you'll find that out in the Yeah, anybody's question that we didn't get to, then um, head over to the forum, guitarmaking.co.uk, and uh, you can ask it again there and we'll get to it eventually. And, um, so apologies if we didn't answer your question. No, I think, I think we've got most of them. Um, and uh, someone, uh, a name from the past, John Kirkland's just checked into. to John Kirkland? Kirkland? Do you remember John Kirkland? That was years ago. I and do years remember ago. John Kirkland. Do you remember that amazing cake his wife sent? Ooh, it was good. Anyway, never no. forget a good cake. Um, right, so uh, uh, we've also... Clint, um, over in Hawaii, has said, can we get, before we finish, can we get a close-up of Roland's guitar? Oh, yeah, uh, good before idea. Before we finish, right? Um, and listen, we, we, we're going to have to wrap up soon because poor Roll, Roll in um, New Zealand, it's, it's half three in the morning there, and he's, he's, he's in bed. He's wow. watching in bed. So we're going to have to wrap up soon. Roll, if you're asleep, wake up. Hopefully you get the idea there. You just have to, obviously you have to be careful. You don't want to be carving um, too close to your to your holes. Beautiful. Um, is that it? Are we done? I think we have. Um, well, you've got to, You've definitely got to show. Um, oh yeah, Roland's guitar. Right, we'll show you Roland's guitar and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, when I'm not live streaming, in, the whole of November has basically been dedicated to, I am building our um, guitar finishing course online. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming. But we spent all last week working on this and filming the process uh, of Lewis spraying, spraying um, Roland's guitar. So this is a piece of 400 year old walnut from Glastonbury, imbued with greatness before it even got to the workshop. 
Um, so this is a full shiny gloss. If you want to know how to do this, that's what we're currently working on. So on the website at the moment, we have design and build your own acoustic and electric guitar. We have the bolt on neck course. I also have a, um, a masterclass on using the bag press for um, guitar making, using the vacuum press for guitar making. Thanks to Darren King for coming to the workshop for that. Um, and uh, there's also a course on um, making acoustic bridges, three different types. Actually, I snuck in an extra one, so there's actually four different types um, of acoustic bridge. Um, the two types are up, and there's two types which I edited yesterday, which are just about to hit the website. So that's including Pyramid Bridge and a Bailey style bridge. So loads of courses on the website. I'm trying to make it the best guitar making academy in the known universe. Um, but while we're here, have a look at um, Roland's neck joint. Roland wanted uh, like a seamless style neck joint. Roland says you missed, you've missed a bit. Oh, look at that neck. <laughs> so this is a it's got like an all access neck joint on it look at that it's too shiny it's so hard to photograph shiny things that that's another course in itself i tell you i had to learn how to um photograph shiny guitars not easy so this is, um, what's this maple called, Carol? Baked maple. Baked. Oh, the smell of this. It smells like maple syrup when you're carving it, when you're sanding it. And the two yellow stripes are satin wood, and it's also got a satin wood fretboard. So notice the fretboard oh, is actually you, yeah. glossed as well. And that is actually really difficult to do, definitely not recommended for a beginner. But lots of words. But, um, but, of but I'm including that on the course. So we're including um, how to gloss a fretboard. Uh, again, not recommended for the beginner. But then, you know, once you've made your basic guitar and you've got your basic um, methods down, then the sky's the limit. So that's what you can do just with a really nice piece of wood and a natural finish. Wow, so there's no colour on this at all. That is all just the natural colour of the wood. Oh, look at the back on that. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. That's just masking tape. We've masked up any area that we don't want sprayed. So in there, we've already painted the cavity with conductive paint. So we've masked that off. That's just a bit of paper to stop the paint getting in there. But yeah, there you go. So uh, Roland's saying, um, are you happy with how it's turned out? I'm very happy with how it's come out, yeah. Absolute corker, I'd say. <laughs> Lewis has done really well, hasn't he? Yeah, top job, Lewis. We filmed the whole procedure of this being sprayed, so if you want to know how we actually did this, then get yourself signed up as a premium member. Coming um, soon. Coming soon, coming yeah. Soon. So we filmed the whole process. As you can see, it's done. So... Um, um, we've filmed it, it just needs editing now. And I'm also going to be having, this is example one, and I've got three other examples. We're going to be doing a simple bolt on neck. That's going to have like an antique, um, you know, amber. You know how they make wood look old by adding a little bit of amber? That's what we're going to do with this one. Um, make it look old by just vintaging it up a bit. Um, so that's a standard bolt on with a fretboard. It's probably the easiest thing you could spray. And we're going to be doing, obviously we're going to spray Penny. This guitar was given its name by you lot on the internet. So this is Penny. And um, because it's, it's a fairly, yeah, cheers TV 101 for Why that. Why was it Mark? Because, because I think Russ said. I think it was Russ who was watching me make it and he, the penny dropped for him. He said another penny dropped. Another penny dropped. As he saw how how it's done. Um, most guitars are made 
in factories and they're not populated by genius luthiers. Ask me how I know. Because all the genius luthiers leave and set up their own workshops, don't they? <laughs> but you don't have to be a genius luthier, you can be an idiot like me and you can still make guitars. So what I've done is I've taken factory methods, taken, simplified them down onto methods that I think anybody can do. Each job takes about 10 or 20 minutes. There's about 50 or 60 jobs to make a basic guitar. Um, and that's what it's all about. So if you want, if you're into all that kind of stuff, head over to the website and sign up as a premium member and you get instant access to all the courses, past, present and future, as long as you stay a member. Alrighty, have we dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's? I think we have. The only thing that remains to be said is if you found anything useful or interesting in this, um, in this little video, then make sure to hit the, uh, the like and the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to make sure you get um, notified of all our upcoming streams. We'll be here every Wednesday and Saturday in the run up to Christmas and then I'm going to have uh, a little break and then we'll be back at it in the new year for sure with some new projects we've got um, our regulars will know we've got um, a guitar that's going to be made from the tree coming up in the new year and all sorts of other amazing stuff so I won't keep you any longer yeah. let's wrap it up right, cause Mark, Mark, remember Mark, just because <laughs> super clunk clint it's 4 30 in hawaii in the morning so they're these right get some sleep guys <laughs> thank you get some sleep because you're going to need all your strength <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank for carving all right so yeah of course all that being said the most important thing as we all know is to check twice and cut once <laughs>